everybody, I'm the Warm. I'm back with some more Rage and Loop today. And last time there were there was a kind of big scene that occurred involving Chami and Rukako. And it was kind of heavy. There's a, there's only really two things I think I want to talk about before moving on. Um, let's just, I guess, let's just address the heavy stuff first. And, you know, get that out of the way. So it was uh, discovered last time that the Uematsu family came about as a kind of... How would I even describe it? A kind of uh, village sanctioned prostitution of some kind where women were forced to well prostitute themselves to the various travelers or hunters in the area and over time this tradition became enshrined culturally, religiously, mythologically, up until the modern day where it seems to have diminished. Uh, and it seems that Rokako is, is kind of... I'm not sure if she said she's the only Uematsu left, but I'm pretty sure it was described that there, there, there aren't many now. It's, it's, it's either just her or very few left. Obviously, due to the coming of the modern day and the cultural transformation that that has brought upon Japan and the wider society, such a thing as that, you know, is, is kind of frowned upon, <laughs> to put it lightly. And thus... She finds herself, Rokako, she finds herself um, the inheritor of this tradition, in a tradition that's falling out of use. And so, obviously she feels conflicted in a way. For one, it, the tradition itself is, it's, it's not, you know, uh, it's not, it, it's, it's difficult in and of itself, you know, the idea that you'd have to devote yourself to potentially, you know, prostituting yourself, but she seems willing to do that sort of thing because of her faith in Yasumizu and Shinai-sama and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, she has an understanding that th this sort of thing is falling out of favor. It's, it's, it's complicated. It's, I don't know. I just, I was, I felt quite down after finishing the last episode. And that was kind of the theme of last episode. I believe I called the last, the, um, I, I, uh, I'm recording a couple days after now, um, and I believe I titled the episode something like Prisoners of Fate, and I think that's, it's describing all three of our characters that were front and center last time. Rakako, obviously, because of what I've just described. Chemi also feels trapped in a similar way. Uh, she feels trapped in Yasumizu, and she is much more on the side of uh, the wider society than Rokako is, but, but nonetheless, Chemi still feels bound in a way. She, she claimed to hate the pe these people and the traditions they serve, but Haruaki was able to sort of see through that and said, that, well, that's not really the case. She... Um, She's trapped between these warring desires of, of hers. And 
Of course, with the entrance of Haruaki, this outsider, she finds herself even more conflicted. Of course, I, I still don't know how much connection there may or may not be uh, with obviously Haruaki's looping, but we got that scene where, remember the first time in this main route when Shami walked into the dining hall and saw Haruaki ostensibly for the first time, but nonetheless she seemed to cry and was greatly emotionally affected by seeing him. And that seems to, even though we've spent we haven't spent as much time with her this time around. She still proclaimed her love for us, for Haruaki. So it's it's hard for me not to think there's there might be some connection between previous loops uh, that is not just confined to Haruaki. Um, and then of course we have Haruaki himself, and he's trapped too in this looping phenomenon. You know, he's and, and it's part of because he's trapped and he wants to save these people that he's forced to do things like turn away Chiemi or, you know, to become this sort of cynical guy who has to make these choices that may kill people. But, yeah. So, we're, we're all in a pretty tough position here, all things considered. Um... I don't know if there's much more to say about that. Uh, one more thing I think I can talk about before moving on was Haruaki, as the snake, has decided to search Yoshitsugu. And I find that very interesting. So I I didn't... Uh, it, it was... It was in last episode, the beginning of last episode, I tried to... I tried to think about it a bit more. And, you know, I, I said, okay, who are the people that we do not have, like, 100% confirmation on? And when I moved to the people we don't have 100% confirmation on over to the suspect list, Yoshitsugu was indeed on the suspect list. So I guess the idea is, and I, I think I've talked about this twice so far, but I'm just trying to, you know, work it out in my head again uh Haruaki's initial analysis of Yoshitsugu was he was probably human because his behavior was the same as the previous one that being he wanted to go out hunting for wolves in the night now of course we know because he is a wolf he would have been perfectly fine doing that maybe that's a I'm not I mean that was the very first night, right? So maybe the wolves hadn't gotten a chance to do a strategy meeting yet. So Yoshitsugu was just doing what he, you know, normally would, would want to do at the time. Just to, you know, make it seem like he was who he was. Um... He did vote for Ty, but of course we did too, you know. Or no, we voted for, excuse me, we voted for uh, Takumi. But he's not the only one who did vote for Ty. Um, and if, I, if I'm if i not remembering right, feel free to let me know. But didn't, I, I guess the idea that cemented Yoshitsugu for Haruaki, it was... Um, obviously there was an attempt on Haruaki's life and it was similar to the last route the Yomi route but the difference is well obviously um, well, the, the difference is that Kaori did not go for the kill after the poisoning didn't work we saw that in the Yomi route she, she attempted a poisoning it didn't work so she attempted to go all out you know take a knife and tried to kill us and that shows that you know if if it's if she believes she's lost her sons or it's for their sake she's willing to go crazy go all out but we're not seeing that here and that difference it it both it, well it, it, it kind of I guess confirmed for Haraki that she is probably human and she's she's probably telling the truth about she's being the crow her being the crow 
So that ask, so then after that we have to ask so who else could have done it. Now, is it the case we we know that after Harawaki stopped he, he recently stopped working at the dining hall. We know he he was working there for the first couple days, first few days. But eventually he stopped and we know that Yoshitsugu was staying near Kaori more often and I believe he was working in the kitchen with her, right? So I'm guessing for Haruaki, the idea is that if it if it isn't Kaori, the only other person who would have had the opportunity to do that would have been Yoshitsugu. Does that sound right? Does that sound... Does that make sense? I'm just trying to follow along with the, the logic here. Because we did say... The, what was it? Kanzo was talking about the bowls or something. And basically no one... It was basically... It would have been out in the open and no one saw anything. So I guess it would have to have been someone back in the kitchen or something. You know? At least I think that's it. If I've missed a clue, you know, if there's something about Yoshitsugu's behavior that I just completely missed, you can let me know. Um, well, obviously... We haven't gone through the night yet, <laughs> so who knows? Haruaki is probably wrong, or Haruaki might be wrong, but I, I don't think he is. He's a, he's this pretty smart dude, smarter than me, uh, I think. So, I'm sure he's probably got the right answer. Um, I'm just trying to make it make sense for me. Okay, those are the two kind of things I wanted to talk about, um, and I think I'm ready to move on. I don't know how much left. Of this, I, I was kind of getting to my limit, so I wanted to stop. I don't know how much left of this scene there is, but we'll get through it, and then presumably we'll get through the night and see the results. Um, and then we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. Let's uh, let's continue. Let me. Okay, looks like I'm recording. All right. I couldn't understand. Well, sorry. Let me just do. She said. Uh, to Haruaki that he's truly gentle. I couldn't understand what she meant at all, so I thought about it for a few seconds before I would ask. Yeah. Yeah, so Rakako did have this idea last time that after being rejected, that, that was still a bit of an odd scene. I guess she had to do it, you know, as it was part of the ritual for, you know, cleansing corruption, or in this case, poison. But she took his pushing her away while she was straddling him as a kind of rejection, even though Haruaki didn't mean, didn't mean it in that way. Um, but from that, Rokako seems to think that Haruaki is not meant for either... That it, Haruaki is not meant not only not for her, but also not for Chiemi either. She seems to think that his destiny or, you know, whatever... I'm not sure if she used that word in particular, but he's basically not meant to stay in Yasumizu, and so she's now convinced that it's impossible. Yeah. And and that is that is interesting. You know, we've we <laughs> I asked a uh, I asked if they were. I'm not sure if I asked, but I did say. I'm a bit more in Team Chami than Team Rakako at the moment, but you know, I I can see I could I could potentially I could see a future where Haruaki doesn't get with anyone. You know, I think that would be a perfectly understandable way that things shake out. But we're just gonna have to see. Whoa, my goodness. I wasn't expecting this. Where's 15 on here? Huh. 
There is, uh, I think someone mentioned there is one more thing I could look at. I think it was Haru. I think I'll probably have to go back and get the key for Haru, I believe. But that's probably not what 15 is. I don't think we've seen that yet. But So I guess this is give up as in give up a potential relationship. Is that what it is? Let's see. Why did the locals think it natural to put themselves down and give up on what they wanted? Was it common for local breakups to be considered the woman's responsibility? Or were men the ones who dumped, while the women simply continued pining or something? Was it a custom? All I'd say to that was... <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> but perhaps the ones making the mistake were the ones who fell in love with girls like that. これで。はい。あなたは長者として読み読みの宴の秘密に一切関わってませんか。はい。身車が何を考えているかは分かりませんが。ネアの端ためなど取るに足りぬと思っているのでしょう。なら、どうして僕を逃がしてくれるなんて
Ooh, we're getting more into some Groundhog Day ideas. Or was there a better path to take now? I couldn't tell anymore. Wolves were out and about tonight. Yet here I was, thinking about this stuff. Was there something wrong with my head? Well, there probably was, but this wrongness was different. Still, I saw how things would go. There was one thing that bothered me, though. Would Rakako-san survive? She did claim that she was the spider. That question, no worry, remained floating in my brain. Because it's all but guaranteed that Haruaki's going to be protected, so the wolves need another target. So that's, that's, the, that's the next thing. That's the next step. Kill the spider. I tried to let go of my consciousness. Oh, I think that's... Was that the wolf symbol? No. It, uh, not necessarily the wolf symbol, but I thought that would be the... Did that... Did we get a key? No, we didn't get a key. There was no thing. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Dang it. Um, well, he'll probably tell us. Nothing I woke up to. Nothing I woke up to came to me as a surprise. I hadn't died. I'd known it'd be that way. All that remained was figuring out how to end things. I merely had to find a compromise between what was happening and what I felt. No, there were two more things to consider. The wolves could go out of control before the feast even began. And I didn't know who I had to mourn today. It was five in the morning, and everything was still covered in mist. I could see things better than at night, but not by a whole lot. Was Kanzo-san patrolling again? He was no longer like he had been yesterday morning, so I could hope that he was, but he no longer had a gun. The fact that he, a confirmed human, was patrolling like that was actually pretty good for us. I carefully took a step forward. The wolves were liable to appear from the mist at any moment, so I snuck around, just in case. However, this was a world of mist and ominous silence. As I walked, the grass swayed, and the crunching of the gravel felt loud enough to be heard by the entire village. In fact, even the sound of my heartbeat was deafening. To hell with this. I had to pull myself together. If they were coming, I surely would have heard them, too. I just had to stand still to know if I was in danger. I didn't hear anything. There was no one. Or perhaps everyone was hiding. As I began suspecting that a murderer was about to pop out of nearby bushes, I started running. I went to the side of the road and hid myself. I carefully thought about the situation. If you looked at the feast as a game, the judges were mostly uninvolved in its progression, leaving it to the players. They only dispensed supernatural deaths to those who killed more than one, or humans who walked around at night. It was really minimal intervention. On the other hand, though, that didn't mean they would stick to the rules and keep the number of victims under two. And so far, the sides that were concerned... Excuse me. And so far, the sides that were cornered tried to kill people even if it meant getting the death penalty. It happened every time. In other words, observance of the rules wasn't valued, meaning that having more deaths than allowed was not a problem. Not only were the humans unprotected, but the wolves who saw justice in the real story were entirely capable of disregarding the corruption to commit murder. Looking at it that way, I had no idea what the Game Master, the Great Lord Shinai, was trying to accomplish. He just want to see bloodshed. In that case, why the roundabout method? He was the god of the mountain. The corruption was his law. Yomi Bito were his enemy. It wasn't clear whether the ones sent to Yomi were the humans or the wolves. It made so little sense. If the corruption wasn't the excuse me, if the corruption was the power of Yomi, it wasn't even clear where the boundary between the mountain and Yomi was. In other words, it was safe to think that the mountain and Yomi were the same thing. Shinai-san, somehow, was both the mountain and Yomi, a 
two-faced god who split the Fujiyoshi people worshipping him into two opposing factions on a whim. His aim was this very bloodshed. The mist, the village, everything here was like a coliseum to him. Hunting ground, basically. I had to be overthinking things. However, the fact that the rules weren't strict and the punishment wasn't swift created an opening. There probably was a way to clear the game of minimal casualties. I had to make it through this situation, though. I made a gamble. After taking a deep breath, I screamed at the top of my lungs, then hid. If Kanzo-san or Takumi-san heard it, they were bound to come. If it was a wolf instead, they would make a move, wondering why something serious was happening without their knowing. They couldn't catch me off guard if I hid and watched from the shadows. Five minutes passed, yet I heard nothing. What if... What if everyone was already dead? That was impossible. Maybe they knew what I was thinking and were now planning to ambush me. I was just guessing, but you never knew what could happen in this mist. My next option was to sneak around and look around the whole village. I would move swiftly and in short bursts. I'd make noise for sure, but it'd also make it harder for any of the other potential lurkers to find me. The Okiba were large and had decent amount of space between them, making them good hiding places. I ran and hid. Then I held my breath. Nothing was happening. Not thinking about it, I repeated the process. I ran and hid, then stayed quiet. I ran and hid. Okay, here we go. If I... Dang it, I'm so frustrated I don't remember the symbol. But if he's the wolf, this is the first time we've ever come face to face in a wolf during, dur like, during the game. Because, you know, in the previous route, it was basically over when we talked with the wolf, so... Oh boy. Yoshitsugakun popped out of the stone I was aiming for and charged at me. I jumped to the side. A wood-cutting axe slashed through the place I was just standing in. Wait, so was that it? the human symbol? He then angrily threw the axe away in a random direction and screamed. Man, if he's if he's a human, I'm officially out of ideas. What's going on here? No point in sneaking around anymore. But this made me understand something. His rage could only mean one thing. No. Really? Oh no. After waiting for him to calm down a bit, we began walking together, no longer trying to hide at all. If we'd made so much noise and survived regardless, it was safe to assume there would be no more ambushes. And even if there was, it'd be 2v2. We would be on equal footing. As expected, we made it to the plaza without anything happening. Yoshitsuga-kun hadn't said a word the whole way. He was just breathing heavily, like when he attacked me. And his eyes were so wide that his agitation seemed to become madness. Not waiting for an answer, I went into the dining hall. I was instantly assaulted by a strange reek. We would never eat here again. As I became certain of that fact, my heart sank, which was pretty out of character for me. I took a step forward. The cupboard's glass was completely destroyed, and there were porcelain pieces all over the place. This must have been caused by Yoshitsugakun's rampage. Her bed was upstairs. I went up carefully, 
just in case, but it didn't feel like there was anyone alive inside. The supports and walls were slightly damaged in places. Yoshitsuka-kun had taken it hard, huh? Even the phone, the only one in the village, was completely broken and on the floor. After seeing it, I went further in, to her room. Why her? It was the same. The philosophy behind the murder was the same as Haru-chan's. The bloody footprints were standard at this point. There was no doubt that this was done by wolves. What was different was that it wasn't a clobbering, but a slashing. One thing I can think of is that they're trying... They might be trying to disrupt the humans. Because we know Yoshitsugu-kun's going to be inconsolable. Yasunaga-kun might be inconsolable. Like, imagine, imagine this scenario. Yasunaga-kun has lost Haru, has just lost his mother. And imagine we're, we're going to try and convince him that now Mochi, his last friend, is the wolf, you know? Takumi's going to take this hard. Is this is this is this the wolf the last wolf strategy here? Our our last uh, our last obstacle, basically to to try and to try and convince the people, even though they're demoralized. Um, or maybe there's another reason. I don't know. Hmm. Kauri Oribe's remains were cut up and drowning in a sea of blood. She hadn't been torn apart or split up randomly. It was best to say that she'd been cut into rings. Say what? Her body was lying on its back, covered neck to toe in horizontal slashes. They did make it to the bone, but they didn't break through them. Her entire front was cut open like a fish fillet. I couldn't tell whether she died from blood loss or suffocation due to, to, to the multiple neck injuries, but whichever it was, she'd suffered an awful end. And yet again, for some reason, her face was left completely untouched. She'd clearly vomited lots of blood, and her expression was downright demonic. Had she been conscious? What was happening? Happening? I, I, I hope not. Ugh. Were the faces of the detestable wolves burned into her now dead eyes? I'd seen how intense this woman could be, and at this point, a part of me felt like it was the real her. However, no matter how demonic, she was definitely a loving mother to both her two sons, as well as Yasumizo as a whole. Looking at her reminded me of the Buddhist goddess demon Hariti, or Kishimo-jin, no matter how irrelevant that was. And oh boy, was it irrelevant. In Shinai-sama's court, gods on the outside had absolutely no power. So what was the... It seemed like, okay, again, I'm kicking myself that I don't recognize that symbol, whether it's human or wolf, but it seemed like Haruaki expected the answer, right? So what was the, what's the strategy here to, con to confirm Yoshitsuga is a human, but then who do we go for next? I thought that was going to be it. Huh. I, I need to wait for confirmation. It, it's still weird. Suddenly, I realized that her arms were completely unharmed. I also noticed that some of the wounds seemed to be facing downwards. The back of the hand was facing upwards, while the palm facing down, despite the wolves being on the palm. Why? Upon further observation, I noticed something strange about her undamaged hand. Her fingers were in a peculiar position. Her right hand 
squeezed its pinky and ring finger. So, so she has her middle finger, pointer finger, and thumb up. Is that it? Meanwhile, her left was grasping all the fingers except the thumb. Huh. I count four fingers up. Does that mean anything? <laughs> nothing's, nothing's coming to mind. Had she been conscious when she'd gotten those wounds? Had she bent her arms and pushed her fingers on the floor into this position? Was it a shape created by her painful, absurd end? Or perhaps some sort of message? Yoshitsuku-kun had caught up with me. With Yasunaga-kun in tow. Kasan. Sore dake ka yo. Sore dake? Omae ni wa boku no kimochi ga wakaru no ka? Naki wa meke ba nattoku suru no ka yo. Boku datte kanashii sa. Zetsubou datte shiteru. Dake do boku wa kangae na kya nara nai nda yo. Kasan no munen o harasu tame ni. よく考えてよく勉強して偉くなれ父さんの無念を晴らすためにそう母さんに言われてきたからなお前はいいよなそんなのなくてさ好き放題に生きて母さんにいっぱい構ってもらえて結局僕はこんな子供みたいなことにず
was something small and covered in blood. He cleaned it with his fingers, exposing something transparent. Apparently, it was something covered in food wrapping. Aniki, akiro yo. Kachan ga shinu kamo shirenai kara. Sono toki wa shitai kassabake te. Son de dete kita mon wo aniki ni watase te. Yappari kachan wa aniki no hou ga suki datta no ga me samashi yagare. I felt apologetic. I probably wasn't even supposed to be here in the first place, so I would at least do this much. The wrap had a rolled piece of paper inside. When I unrolled it, I realized just how small it was. There was a t there was tiny but legible writing on it. The wrap protected any damage called caused by the blood or saliva so I could read it clearly. Okaka Uematsu, Chami Serizawa, Chikamochi Kamoshida, Meiko Other. Are those... Wait. Is this related to her fingers? Because if it's related to her fingers, it would be for Mako. But... How can that be? What is this meant to be? If we're considering her to be the human and the crow, are these her suspects? Chikamochi's on there, but Mamiya isn't. Chami and Rikako are on there. Hmm. My my initial thought is maybe this these are her suspects. But the the implications of that are so terrible that i'm i am recoiling from that idea immediately okay what are your thoughts haruaki oh there's more okay these are uh, kauri's words please read this together you two I always knew you were concerned about my attitude. I wanted Yasunaga to show what he's capable of somewhere far away from this dreadful place, and I would be too worried if I didn't have Yoshitsugu by my side. I came this far with such thoughtlessness, but it doesn't seem like I will survive this night, so please understand this much. I loved both of you more than anything in the world. Please forget everything aside from that and have a fun brotherly life from mother this wasn't something I could read for them I just spread it out and put it on the simple dresser on my side they didn't say a word, and I took that as a yes. I walked up to the remains. Again, I checked the wound I checked that the wounds on the palms were facing down. The right hand's thumb, index finger, and middle finger were up, while on the left it was only the thumb. I looked into the wound Yoshitsugu had reached into and extended my finger toward it. I opened it up and examined the cut. It was just one large tube. Naruhodo. Takumi-san was standing at the entrance to the dining hall along with everyone else. How long have I been going for, man? Oh, man, I'm getting... You know? Okay. Let's call it here today. 
because that was a lot. Um, if, if last episode was heavy, uh, we got another heavy one immediately after, so let's, let's stop here and give ourselves a chance to decompress from that, because that was a lot. Um, I need to go back... First, I need to go back to the other... Uh, a previous episode and look at what the symbol is, because... I'm thinking that was probably the human symbol, right? I think... I mean... Hang on. Can't I just... Hang on, hang on. I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna find out right now. I'm gonna find out right now, actually. Yeah, it should be here. Okay, hang on, hang on. That... That is not a wolf symbol. That is not a wolf symbol. Let me let me let me double triple check here. Um no wait, it would be a different one. One second. Here we go, here we go. This should be it, right? Okay, here it is. Show me. Yep. Yep, yep. Okay, yep. I got it. I got it. I, I got it. I got it for sure. That's a human symbol. Yoshitsugu's human. Yoshitsugu-kun's human. For sure. Let's, let me write that down on the notes. Let, let me put them over in the confirmed section. Okay, and and Calrie's obviously over there too. Okay, so um, I'll talk a bit about the death, I guess, more next time. Uh, I'm really worried about what Calrie's note means. very worried okay so again here's the thought process this is just the initial one that I have if you have a different one you could let me know but here's my thought process it was she wrote down the names of her su suspects and then as she died she um, she obviously swallowed her note but then also um, forced her hands downward such that, you know, so that even if she died, her fingers would still, the fingers that she wanted up were st would still be up. Um, hang on, actually. Let me check something real quick. It, it's interesting that it's, it's on two... Okay, hang on. So in total, it's four fingers, right? It was three on one hand and one on the other, right? So if we add them all up, that's four. But it's weird that it's on, you know, why didn't she just do four on one hand? Why did she do three and one? Because if it's three and one, that would be Rakako and Chikamochi. And we know Chikamochi's a wolf. But that's, 
like really crazy. Or would it be? I don't know. Uh, I remember in, in the Yomi route, the first route that, the main route that we did, the whole time I had this thought in the back of my head, what if they make Chami, you know, the girl we're getting close to, a wolf? It, are they gonna do that this time with Rokako? But how does that make sense? Because then, who poisoned us? And if we were poisoned by a wolf, why would Rokako resuscitate us in that instance? I don't know. I don't know. If you guys, if you guys have another idea for this, let me know, because that's kind of all I can think of right now. Okay, I'll try to think about this more myself. And next time we'll uh, we'll deal with the ath aftermath and. I don't know how close we're, the, we're at the end of this route, but I think Haraki promised that he'd finish this today, so we're, we might be closer to the end than, than I realize. In any case, I've been the warm. This has been Raging Loop. Things are just escalating all the time, man. The, the loop is indeed still raging. Uh, hope to see you next time. Have a good one.